Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of The Social Connection. It's your program about social media, the trends you talked about, the videos you shared and what new changes social media companies offered its users. I'm Shreya Upadhyay and with me is Arun Nayal. Thank you Shreya. Welcome everyone. In the next half an hour, we'll take you through the top trends, latest news and everything that kept social media busy. But first up, let's take a look at what we have in store for you in this edition. Mobile internet users in India are expected to reach 213 million by June this year. Social media accounts of several organizations hacked in France and the United States. Online campaign against comment on LGBT community spreads across India. We all know that mobile phone users in India are growing by leaps and bounds. And so are the internet users on mobiles. Interestingly, in India, mobile web users are expected to reach about 213 million by June this year. That's right, and interestingly, the main reason behind this rapid increase is the availability of cheaper smartphones and affordable data plan in the markets. The report by Internet and Mobile Association of India says that India will overtake the United States as the second largest internet market in the world. More details in this report. The mobile internet user base in India is all set to exceed 213 million by June this year. The report titled Mobile Internet in India 2014, released this week, said there were 173 million mobile internet users in the country at the end of December last year. The report was jointly released by a non-profit organization, Internet and Mobile Association of India and IMRB International. The report stated that mobile web users living in rural areas have accounted for a growth rate of 33% since October of last year and the total is expected to touch 53 million within the next six months. Mobile internet consumers in urban and rural regions are likely to reach 143 million and 49 million by March this year respectively. As more and more people surf the web on their phones, monthly bills are getting bigger too. Average monthly mobile bill per user in India has increased by 13% in last year to Rs 439 across the country. The report also found that 63% of the country's mobile internet users spend between 101 and Rs 500 monthly on their mobile connection. About one-fourth users spend between 501 and Rs 1000. The report stated that availability of cheaper smartphones and affordable data plan in the market is the main reason for increasing the rate of users. It also revealed that the primary activity for 74% of mobile internet users is to access email. It is followed by social networking which is accessed by 61% of the mobile internet users. Online chatting through instant messengers, watching videos, listening to music and navigation are some of the other activities common among users. According to the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, there were 935.4 million mobile connections in India as on 31st October last year. The IAMAI IMRB survey was conducted across 35 cities with more than 1 million populations, including the eight large metros and smaller cities such as Coimbatore, Jaipur, Lucknow, Ludhiana, and Vishakhapatnam. The report also forecast to touch 302 million internet users, both mobile and broadband, by end of 2014, overtaking the US as the second largest internet market in the world. At present, China stands in the lead with its population of web users crossing 600 million, while the US has 279 million users. After the Charlie Hebdo attack, websites of several French and American organizations have come under attack from anti-state elements. This week, more than 1,000 French websites have been targeted by self-described Islamist hackers since the attack on the satirical weekly. Yes, social media accounts of the US Central Command was also hacked by a group claiming to be linked to the ISIS. Several messages were posted on CENTCOM's Twitter feed. Here's a report. Followers of US Central Command social media pages got an eyeful of apparent ISIS propaganda earlier this week when the Tampa-based military agencies Twitter and YouTube accounts were hacked. While both accounts have since been suspended, followers were able to read a host of threats against American soldiers and their families. American soldiers, we are coming, watch your back, read one tweet. The background and profile photo of the Twitter account were both changed to show an apparent militant and the phrases Cyber Caliphate and I Love You ISIS using one of the acronyms for the militant group. White House Press Secretary said the Obama administration is examining and investigating the extent of the incident. 
In response to the hack, the U.S. military ordered scores of people running social media accounts to change their passwords and take tougher steps to protect the security. The CENTCOM YouTube page also appeared to have been hacked with two Islamic State propaganda videos added to the page and the same cyber caliphate banner posted. The YouTube account was eventually terminated due to repeated or severe violation of YouTube's guidelines. In the meantime, websites in France have been hit by self-described Islamist hackers in the week since Paris was hit by attacks on satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo. Most of the hacks targeted relatively small sites operated by local government, universities, churches and businesses whose home pages were defaced with messages that included there is only one God, Allah, dead to France and dead to Charlie. Users were directed to a site broadcasting a fundamental speech when they logged on to the official website of the Lord Department in southwest France. This wave of attack seems to be part of a tit for tat. Last week, members of the Ragtag Hacker Collective Anonymous blocked the jihadist website to show their support for Charlie Hebdo. A Goan minister recently stoked the controversy by his remarks on LGBT community. The comment prompted an online campaign, hashtag Clinic Bharo, on social media sites. The minister said LGBT people suffer from a disease and offered them treatment. That's right, supporters and people of the LGBT community were quick to condemn the minister's remark on the online platform, saying that they are proud of what they are. The Goa State Minister's comment declaring his government's intention to set up special centres to train LGBT communities has attracted criticism on the social media sites. The minister also said that the state government has a plan to offer medicinal treatment in order to bring LGBT youth back to normal. The minister's statement ignites outrage in the media and among gay rights activists in the country. In response to the minister's comments, the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender community took several digs and said they are proud of their choices. With the hashtag Clinic Bharo, many supporters and members of the community raised their voices and sought to laugh away the minister's suggestion. Gay rights activists said the minister's alleged comments are a step backward in India's attempt to empower the LGBT community. Later, after facing flack for his comments, the Goa minister took a U-turn and said that he was misunderstood and misquoted on the issue. In a bit to douse the controversy, Chief Minister of the State said alternative sexual orientation was a natural thing wrapping his cabinet colleagues for intolerance. United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who was on a visit to the country, said that he stood firm for equality for everyone in society. Advocating the abolition of the controversial Article 377 of the Constitution that criminalizes homosexuality, he said Indian government should really promote the human rights of those peoples with different alternative sexual orientation. India's Supreme Court reimposed a ban on gay sex in late 2013, ruling that the responsibility for changing the 1861 law rested with lawmakers and not judges. We are heading for a short commercial break. We have lots of interesting stories coming up. Stay tuned and keep watching DD News. Welcome back. You all must be familiar with the trending topics of the week, but here's a quick wrap of the top trends on social media sites. This week's social media platforms were dominated by awards, the Golden Globe and the Oscars. While the former was given away, nominations for the latter were announced. Hashtag Golden Globes and Golden Globe Awards 2015 trended across Twitter and Facebook. After Oscar nominations were announced, Hashtag Oscars, Oscars So White, Oscar nominations and Academy Awards were among the top trends. The week began on a festive note and Makar Sakranti, Pongal and Bihu were among the top trends. With Delhi's political scene heating up, Hashtag Arvind Kejriwal, Kiran Bedi and Shazia Almi kept peoples busy. Australian bowler Brett Lee retired from international cricket. Fans and supporters talked about it on social media, making hashtag Brett Lee and Brett Lee Retires top trends. And there's good news for Bachchan fans as the Bollywood star has been honoured with the Social Media Person of the Year Award by Internet and Mobile Association of India. The actor, who has more than 10 million followers on Twitter, thanked his fans online and complimented social media for becoming a powerful tool of communication. Next up, 
there's a good news for online content posters as the government has unblocked several websites it closed for allegedly hosting terrorist propaganda. That's right, the 32 sites which were recently closed included the likes of GitHub, Vimeo and Dailymotion. This was done after owners of these sites promised cooperation with the government in removing objectionable content. In a major rapid relief to some website links, government unclogs those 32 sites which were blocked last month by an immediate order. These sites were blocked for allegedly hosting jihadi propaganda. Central government has ordered internet service providers, the ISPs, to unblock 32 websites and website links it had asked them to block in December last year. Sources in the Department of Electronics and Information Technology said that the government has ordered ISPs to unblock the 32 websites that had been blocked last month. The Department of Electronics and Information Technology functions under the Union Ministry of Communications and Information Technology. The block, which had websites like github.com, vimeo.com and dailymotion.com at the receiving end, was put on the request of the anti-terror squad, Mumbai. On December 31st itself, senior government officials had said that the unblocking process had started for websites that have compiled with the Indian government request. The block had been lifted for four websites at the time itself. Indian Computer Emergency Response Team's Director General Gulshan Rai confirmed that the unblocking orders had been sent to ISPs. Acting on an order by a Mumbai court, the government on December 17 asked the ISPs to block 32 websites which included popular online tools like GitHub and SourceForge used by thousands of programmers. The court's action was based on a complaint by the Mumbai Anti-Terrorism Squad which claimed that these sites were being used to spread pro-terror messages. The war to capture greater share of Indian Sky is heating up once again. This time through the online ticket booking system for flights. Search engine giant Google has finally launched its flight search tool in India. That's right, the new service is likely to ease the airline booking needs of Indian passengers and provide them with options. This feature is available on both desktops as well as mobile platforms. Despite a not-so-good start in most markets, Google is bringing its flight search product to India. As it does elsewhere, flight search lets users look up airfare for various destinations on a map. It also displays available flights, sortable by price, duration, number of stops and more. Google on its official blog said that, Now you can search directly for flights within Google or access google.co.in slash flights to quickly find, compare and book flights from a mobile device, tablet or desktop. Google has tied up with GoIBibo for the flight search tool which means the results displayed on a search will also include results from GoIBibo's portal. The new Google flight search feature is expanded to offer everything you will need to search and book a flight. You just need to enter the departure and destination cities and you will be able to see the flight details. It is interesting to note that Google may also include sponsored listing into the information which means they will be making money from the bookings that are referred directly from Google. Also, Google has gone beyond just simple search and book. They have implemented some amount of intelligence based on your search history. So when you access the flight search, you will immediately see the price and duration of flights to several popular destinations you might like to visit. All this will be based on your preferences and previous searches. If you set your dates and tap to expand the map, you will instantly see live prices for destinations around the world. However, this step of Google poses competition to online travel industry in India. Usually, online agents charge a transaction fee from buyers. The Google service, on the other hand, redirects users to the concerned airline's booking page, which enables consumer to avoid the commission paid to the travel agent. Despite receiving an underwhelming response, Google has shown faith in its flight search. And India being the second biggest internet market, Google should give it a go.
it's time to see all the feedback that you sent in on Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Well, this is the end of our show. Continue sending in your feedback and comments as you have been on ddnews.com at the rate gmail.com, on our Twitter handle ddnewslive, our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. Before we sign off, we leave you with an interesting video. See you again next week. Thank you and goodbye. goodbye. Speaking up empowers us. It always has. We give voice to our ideas. We share our inspiration. And when enough people listen, it can change the world. But speaking up is never easy and has often been met with resistance. Right now, worldwide, millions of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex people risk their freedom, safety, even their lives, just being who they are. But as people come to know individuals and their families, it becomes much more difficult to discriminate. In societies around the world, people have overcome hostility by opening up to those around them and having others speak up in support. Every person has a story, no matter how small it may seem. We are all the foundation for this movement for equality. So share your story. Speak up for LGBT equality, change your world and inspire someone else to do the same.